guys, the Bitcoin blockchain ground to a near haul last week, with transaction fees increasing by over 10 times in just a matter of a few short days. Anybody who was trying to use the blockchain during this time was absolutely banging their head against the wall. People inside the Bitcoin community were biting each other's heads off online, fighting about how to fix this problem that essentially broke the chain because of a problem that was caused by a recent upgrade in the Bitcoin software that we're just now starting to see the effects of. And many fear this problem is only going to get worse until they can find a way to fix it. Well, I'm going to unpack everything they're fighting about in this video and tell you everything you needed to know as a blockchain developer myself who works this technology on a daily basis, explain exactly what happened in simple terms, and what I think is likely going to happen next and what some potential solutions are for this problem. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then definitely smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you don't know how to become a blockchain master, step by step, start to finish, break into the blockchain industry and increase your salary well past 100K, I can try to do that over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's jump into this. Let's talk about the complete disaster that's been happening on the Bitcoin blockchain lately. And of course, nothing in this video is designed to be financial advice. I'm not trying to tell you to buy or sell any cryptocurrency based on this information. But in case you were just completely checked out of the blockchain space over the past month or so, you know, meme coins have made a massive comeback, followed, of course, by significant correction. I just put out a video last week talking about the truth about the Pepe coin collapse. But we've seen new major meme coins like Pepe coin come out of the scene that went up like 5 million percent or something crazy like that in just a few short days, with some people turning really small investments like 25 or or $100 into over a million dollars plus. And whenever this happens, you see people rapidly jumping in the blockchain space, trying to chase this hype train until it completely fizzles out. Now, this is not the first meme coin season we've seen in the crypto space. We've We've had multiple cycles just like this in the past with Shiba Inu coin, which caused transaction fees on blockchains like Ethereum to absolutely skyrocket where basically nobody could use the chain. But this is the first time we've had a meme coin season that has directly affected the Bitcoin blockchain and caused transaction fees to spike over 10 times in a really short amount of time. During the peak of all this insanity, it cost over $30 just to do a simple Bitcoin transaction. So why is that? Well, because this is the first time that we've ever seen meme coins actually on top of the Bitcoin blockchain itself. So let me explain. So basically, you know, Bitcoin underwent an up upgrade a little over a year ago called Taproot, which changed the nature of Bitcoin, moving it from just a simple blockchain that just moved Bitcoins around with some simple scripting on top of it, all the way to one that actually would allow you to do things like create new tokens on top of it or even NFTs. And while Taproot, you know, went live a little over a year ago, that was in the middle of a pretty nasty bear market where you didn't see a lot of crypto speculation in terms of launching new meme coins or anything like that and hoping they're going to go to the moon. So this upgrade has been around for a while, but now we're seeing the effects of what this actually does when the blockchain space starts to get even just a little bit crazy for a little while. Because the meme coin season that we've seen recently is pretty small in comparison to what we we saw like back in 2021 with rampant speculation around things like Shiba Inu and Dogecoin at the height of a crypto bull market where Bitcoin was close to $70,000. And this is just a taste of a problem that could get much worse. Then there's a real problem on our hands that lots of people are fighting about online and how to fix it. I'll talk about that more in a minute. All right, so let me dive into the technical details a little more. I know I kind of went through that quickly, but I want you to understand exactly how this problem is happening so that you can clearly understand what the possible solutions are to fix this in the future. So really, you have to understand the background and the history of Bitcoin. Really, it was designed just to be a blockchain that just supports the Bitcoin cryptocurrency itself, basically giving you a wallet to securely hold your Bitcoin so that you can custody it, so that you don't like leave it on a centralized exchange or something like that, and allow you to just send Bitcoin from one account to another, basically just to facilitate transactions. Now, for a long time, it's had the capability of writing simple scripts, but it hasn't been until this Taproot upgrade that we started to see a little more sophisticated concepts on top of the Bitcoin blockchain. So for example, it's different from a blockchain like Ethereum, for example, which, you know, from day one was designed to be a world computer. So of course, you have any of cryptocurrency on top of the Ethereum blockchain like Ether, that works kind of like Bitcoin, where you can just send it around, you can store it in your wallet, you can do simple transactions. But from day one, Ethereum has been designed with the idea to support smart contracts, basically just arbitrary programs that you can put on the blockchain that you write in Solidity so that you can build decentralized applications in a Turing complete way so that you can write pretty much anything that you want to, although not everything's good to put on the blockchain, but you can do that, all right? And it's basically led to things like NFTs. That's really where it was born, was on top of the Ethereum blockchain and also ERC-20 tokens, which is basically a way to create, you know, any cryptocurrency you want to without spinning up a new blockchain. That's what's given rise to the meme coins. They started out on Ethereum. They migrated to other blockchains. And also that's where the NFT speculation started off with, you know, crypto punks back in the past two bull cycles. Now, whenever these asset prices start to absolutely explode, 
whether it's meme coins or whether it's NFTs, this has always caused transaction fees to suffer. And that's one of the main reasons people complain about a blockchain like Ethereum saying it's too slow, it's too expensive to use. It's because this times of peak network activity, people are trying to do things besides just, you know, send cryptocurrency around. They're trying to like swap tokens on applications like Uniswap. They're trying to do NFT drops. They're trying to like, you know, buy and sell NFTs on big marketplaces like OpenSea. And all this network activity creates massive demand for block space that makes it way more expensive to do any transaction. Because you have to understand how blockchain transaction fees work. It's a supply and demand market. The more people that are trying to use the blockchain at one time, it gets more expensive because there's only so much block space that you can put all those transactions in, whether that's an Ethereum or whether it's on Bitcoin. Bitcoin basically works the exact same way where the more people are trying to use the blockchain at any given time, the more expensive that is. And really up to this point, all the demand for the Bitcoin blockchain was really just to you know buy Bitcoin and move it around. But ever since the Taproot upgrade happened, now it's subject to all the other potential reasons why somebody might want to use the Bitcoin blockchain, like speculate on meme coins or even NFTs. And so entering the latest meme coin season, started with Pepe coin on a blockchain like Ethereum, it actually got forked and put over onto the Bitcoin blockchain. We had a version of Pepe coin actually running on Bitcoin where people are buying and selling stuff like crazy, which contributed to the massive spike in transaction fees where we saw the entire price go up over $30 or over 10x in a matter of just a few short days. Now, obviously, this presents a massive problem, especially for people who just want the Bitcoin blockchain to be responsible for sending Bitcoins around and holding them in their wallet. And this is what a lot of the fighting inside the Bitcoin community has been about of the past several weeks. Because inside of this community, you really have two different viewpoints that are completely at odds with one another. Okay, one perspective is just what I was saying. We want Bitcoin to just be about Bitcoin. And then you have the other side that says, no, we really want Bitcoin to be the leader of all of the Web 3.0 stuff that's happening in the crypto space. We think everything else is inferior. Or we just want Bitcoin to have a share of this massive pie. But this is a problem because you really can't have your cake and eat it too at least with the current design of how this stuff is implemented. So at some point, you have to sit back and ask yourself, you know, do you really want the Bitcoin blockchain to be the star of the Web 3.0 show, while it already has a massive disadvantage to other blockchains that do this pretty well, like Ethereum? Because if you do, you have to deal with the massive congestion that comes from meme coin season. And in addition to that, you have to deal with the NFT hype cycles. Because along with the Bitcoin Taproot upgrade, we haven't just seen meme coins come onto the scene with BRC20 tokens. We've also seen NFTs or NFT-like concepts with Bitcoin ordinals, okay? So basically, this is a way to create an inscription on the Bitcoin blockchain, which is basically like an NFT, although it doesn't work exactly like Ethereum ERC721 tokens. It still serves the basic concept. And we've seen these start to pop off as well with an early collection, the Bitcoin punks, like the crypto punks, which are launched in the Bitcoin blockchain, which have already sold for multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars. And I don't expect that to be the last collection that really starts to gain adoption on top of Bitcoin. There's always people who are trying to speculate, trying to find the next hot thing on the next blockchain. And Bitcoin is really a virgin ecosystem for all this stuff to start to flourish. And it's not just me that has this opinion. Obviously, other people who support blockchain do as well because you have popular marketplaces like Magic Eden who are already working to support the Bitcoin blockchain with their NFTs. You can already click over to the uh, tab on their page and look at NFT-based collections to go ahead and buy and sell. And we already have statements from major exchanges like Binance that plan to support Bitcoin NFTs as well. So this is a snowball that's already starting to gain steam. And when you combine that with the meme coin speculation that is bound to come back at some point, this could present some really choppy waters for the Bitcoin blockchain ahead of time if something isn't fixed. Let's talk about what some of those possible solutions are, and I'm going to give you my opinion. Because there's lots of different solutions posed out there from these different perspectives of the Bitcoin community. Basically, some people saying the more Bitcoin acts like Ethereum, the less investors should like it. All the way on the other side of things with developers like Eric Wall saying that ordinals are good. It forces infrastructure on Bitcoin to mature. It forces the scaling debate, which solves the security budget issue and brings Bitcoin back as a unit of account. So I'll just throw a couple different solutions that have been proposed by people from the Bitcoin community themselves. So one solution is basically uh, people wanting to put an entire filter on this entire process and just not let people even do these tokens at all, whether it's BRC20 tokens or uh, you know, crypto collectibles with the NFTs. And most people are pushing back on that because they say, hey, you created a censorship resistant blockchain where people can do really whatever they want to. And now you're imposing censorship on this type of thing. So I don't think that's very likely for that really reason right there. Another solution that I've seen proposed is basically putting some type of time constraint on how often you can do these types of things. 
It's essentially rate limiting this stuff, which kind of puts the activity in a different lane from regular Bitcoin transactions and slows you down from doing these types of things. Now, I'm not a huge fan of this either, because in a way, this is soft censorship. It's just throttling certain types of activity and saying, hey, you're second class citizens of the network. And what we really want to do is make this for Bitcoin. So I don't think this is a very good idea. And I don't think this is the way forward or that's what is even going to happen. Another possibility could involve you getting some free money. And so why is that? Well, one option on the table is that the Bitcoin blockchain itself just forks completely. <laughs> okay where basically you have the version of Bitcoin that exists right now with Taproot, with all the meme coins, all the NFTs, and then the blockchain splits off into a new version that either doesn't include the capability to publish these things, or maybe includes all the ones that have been published up to a certain point, okay? And then doesn't allow anything in the future or imposes maybe some of these crazy restraints that I've talked about, whether it's filtering or censorship of these types of activities, which basically would be the solution for people who want Bitcoin to be just about Bitcoin to have their own blockchain and the people who want Bitcoin to try to, you know, be inclusive for Web 3.0 activity to have its own blockchain. And then the market would ultimately decide which one ends up winning out in the long run. Now, this is really not off the table because we've seen Bitcoin forks happen in the past, especially like during the 2017, 2018 era with forks like Bitcoin Cash, all right? So a lot of these obviously weren't that successful over the long term, and the market ultimately decided who the winner was going to be. But here's why I think this is actually very probable, okay? Now, I want want you to hear me out, but I think it's very probable that we're going to see a Bitcoin fork of some kind based upon this, but I don't think it's necessarily going to be very successful. So why is that? Well, anytime that you have a massive problem like this that spreads awareness across the entire crypto space, there's always incentives for somebody to come in and say, hey, we're going to fix this problem. We're going to take these problems out of the blockchain, create our own new copy, and we're going to have a new cryptocurrency associated with this. And it doesn't take a lot of effort to weaponize people behind this agenda because there's always a chance of getting free money out of this. Anytime a chain forks like this, anybody who holds coins on one blockchain can instantly get free coins on the next one. Okay, I'm pretty familiar with this, like in the Ethereum ecosystem, for example. Pretty much anytime Ethereum goes through some massive network upgrade, there's almost always a chain fork of some kind where a new blockchain is created and stays behind without the change or maybe implements some different set of rules. And it you almost always spins off a brand new cryptocurrency, okay, because of the financial incentives that are involved here. All right, one of the last ones that we saw was the Ethereum proof of work project. Back when Ethereum underwent the upgrade to remove proof of stake, you basically said, hey, you know, the whole pitch here is we want to create a blockchain that still supports mining, even though Ethereum's moving to proof of stake. So we're going to create a new blockchain called ETH Proof of Work. We're going to take a snapshot of everybody who holds coins, and you're going to get free coins on this new blockchain. But uh, we can see what the market decided. I mean, the cryptocurrency price absolutely tanked, and this clearly did not become any type of contender to the main Ethereum blockchain. So hear me out. I do think that a fork is very likely to happen, but I don't necessarily think the fork is going to be very likely to really compete with the main Bitcoin blockchain at all. And so lastly, what I think is probably the most likely solution going forward is basically creating a way to improve the efficiency of how these types of activities are done on top of the Bitcoin blockchain, okay? So my my opinion is that really, personally, I do think this is a problem for Bitcoin, I would personally like to see, you know, Bitcoin mostly just getting used for transacting Bitcoin and leaving some of these other activities to blockchains like Ethereum that are more built for it from day one. But even Ethereum has had to pursue its own solutions in terms of layer two scaling solutions, even though they've been thinking about that for a very long time before other people were really aware of the problem. But Bitcoin can do something kind of like that and improve those optimizations on how it handles this stuff that's in a separate lane from the block space that's required just to send Bitcoins around. And so I think the sort of Web 3.0 on Bitcoin is let out of the box. It's like Pandora. There's no stuffing it back in the box. And the only real hope forward is to improving that process and keeping it as separate as possible from the main value proposition of Bitcoin in the first place. And while I think a fork is most likely going to happen, I don't think it's actually going to be a big successful fork that competes with the Bitcoin blockchain in really any meaningful way. All right, so that's an overview of the big problem that's been facing Bitcoin over the past several weeks. You know, the blockchain has ground to a halt with super high transaction fees, which over 10x in a matter of just a few short days because of meme coin season. This is the first time that, you know, meme coins have actually been issued on top of Bitcoin during a hype cycle, which has caused the blockchain to just essentially grind to a halt for people who are trying to use it on a day-to-day basis. That's what everybody's fighting about. That's a breakdown of some of the possible solutions going forward. Now, if you want to learn how to create applications for Bitcoin, whether it's you know sending tokens around, issuing your own tokens, or issuing your NFTs, then make sure you subscribe to the channel, smash that like button down below. I'm actually going to be putting some videos out on how to do this exact same thing. You know, while I'm a blockchain developer, 
My primary focus is on Ethereum. I think this is a cool area of exploration that lots of people want to learn about. So I will most likely be putting out some videos very soon on how to do both of these things. So make sure you subscribe. Make sure you turn on notifications to find out about those whenever they go live. In the meantime, if you want to get your hands dirty and code out some other blockchain applications, you get on my YouTube homepage. You can find those free courses there. They like you to be courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those videos and you want to take the next step, I can show you to become a blockchain master step-by-step -step start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp, how to break into the industry, how to increase your salary well past 100K. You really don't have to be an expert to get started right now. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real-world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.